The Commonwealth Games are back and how well will Team Nigeria fare? We assess the chances of Nigeria's Falconets also ahead of the forthcoming FIFA Under-20 Women's Championship looking at the squad and the team list. And today's newspaper headlines have some quite interesting headlines. We'll analyze them ahead on the program. Everybody, good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. It's a potpourri of interesting conversations uh, this morning, taking the business angle and the sports angle with interesting analysis and guests. Uh, we implore you to stay where you are. Grab uh, a cup of hot chocolate or coffee or whatever it is. Uh, mine has uh, the Plus TV logo right here. And you can enjoy the program uh, in the comfort of your home. My name is Kofi Bartels. We usually start the program with, by looking at what's trending in the social space, and we call it our top trending segment. And uh, we begin with something that has really, really taken our attention over the past few years and has generated a lot of discussion and heated debate amongst Nigerians, both for and against. And that is the, the trial of um, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra group, IPOB. Mazi Namdi Kanu. All right, um, the, the, new, the new story and the current debate is centering around uh, the demand by the indigenous people of Biafra group, IPOB, which he leads for Namdi Kanu to be released immediately uh, from detention. They're demanding his immediate release um, from the custody of the Department of State Services in Abuja, where he has been uh, for some time now. Of course, uh, he was um, uh, extradited back to Nigeria. Some will say he was extraordinarily uh, rendered back to Nigeria, or brought by force to the country. But he's been in the custody of uh, the indigenous people of Biafra Group, um, in the DSS custody, rather, for some time now. Now, the IPOB is saying that their demand has become necessary because of the threats by terrorists to take over Abuja and the entire Nigeria, is what uh, they're saying. And this has, of course, given them some concern um, uh, for the health of their leader. They want him back as far as um, these threats go. They feel these threats are real. Now, let's look at some more of what the IPUB is saying. They released a statement yesterday um, through the now very popular Ima Pavo. Uh, maybe some should call him Ima Popular because he's um, been in the news a lot. He's the publicity secretary or the head of I IPOB's media and publicity department. Uh, he reminded the federal government in that release uh, and the security agencies in Nigeria that the United Nations had mandated the unconditional release of Kanu. He also added that the appropriate compensation should be paid to him without delay because he committed no crime against Nigeria and her sovereignty. Uh, Apavo went on to say on behalf of the group that the closure of public schools in the FCT uh, showed the federal government had you know, less control of the security situation and they're saying the federal government in their view can no longer guarantee the safety of Kanu in detention. I'm sure they're looking at what will play out if these terrorists um, have their way and are able to you know, take over Abuja, for instance, uh, what will they do to Kanu, who has been very vocal and very critical of um, you know, the terrorists and indeed the northern part uh, of the country. Now, this is what they said uh, in their letter. Quote, the attention of the global movement and family of IPOB has been drawn to the sudden closure of all the government public schools operating in Abuja because of the threats from terrorists uh, groomed by Fulani people to take over Abuja and the entire Nigeria. These are his words, so we're just bringing them to you uh, verbatim. He went on by saying, quote, IPOB therefore demands the immediate release of the, the leader, Mazi Namdikano from the DSS dungeons, where it puts it, how it puts it in Abuja by the federal government and her compromised DSS, he went on to say. Uh, he went on to say also, quote, we are reminding Nigeria and her security agencies that the world through the United Nations Rights Group, all right, has mandated for the unconditional release of Manzi Namdikanu and their appropriate compensation paid to him without delay because he has committed no crime 
uh, against Nigeria and her uh, sovereignty. So they're saying Abuja is no longer safe uh, for their leader. You know, schools are closing. We need him back. Um, I mean, you know, the discussion has been for and against, like uh, you would expect it to be. He also had some words for the, the, the trial judge, the judge in his uh, uh, treason case, uh, talking about my Lord, the Honorable Justice Binta Nyako, um, also calling on her uh, and uh, the jurist uh, to know that uh, Kano's life is in danger while being detained in the SS custody. Of course, um, they can look at um, the, uh, the Kujay prison attack, uh, the jailbreak, where even someone uh, who has been in jail over uh, uh, drug peddling allegations, a former uh, super cop, Abakari, uh, he could have been affected either positively or negatively by that jailbreak. But uh, thank God he wasn't uh, harmed and he also refused to escape. Uh, some of the other inmates uh, were able to make their way out of the Kujay prison. Now, the question is, is the DSS detention facility uh, as, as poorly guarded and not unprepared, or will they be unpre as unprepared as uh, the Kuje prison officials? Uh, we don't know. But what we know is that uh, DSS, no be uh, Nigerian prison service, you know, the, the different uh, bodies. But the, the threats are real. Uh, the threats are real. Different, you know, messages flying on social media last night, um, as a matter of fact, uh, find around social media last night saying that uh, there, was, there was imminent attack in Abuja and also in Lagos but these um, reports unconfirmed some of the messages flying around social media we know which ones have been confirmed for instance uh, uh, an attack on soldiers near the um, Zuma Rock uh, on the road between Niger State and uh, Abuja all right so these are fears that um, are real now, Imam Pafo also went on to add, quote, Bintan Yako and her jurists should know that Kano's life is in danger while being detained at the DSS custody in Abuja. Uh, again, she should know that these terrorists attacked uh, the Nigeria Defense Academy at Kaduna, the War Training College, Jaji in Kaduna, the Kujay prisons in Abuja, and other uh, security facilities in Abuja. Therefore, the DSS facility is not immune to attack by these, um, what they call, these are his words now, state uh, uh, you know, sponsored terrorists, he says. So, um, um, some, some are saying, you know what, this could be a, a, just a way for the IPOB to, to see if they can, they can sneak in one. You know, you're seeing the, the situation on ground uh, to the advantage. Some have argued that hey, if there's any danger, the, the best thing for the group to do, because the case is still ongoing, uh, in the courts, uh, the Federal High Court in Abuja, is to maybe transfer the case to maybe Lagos, all right, and uh, move him to Lagos, you know, somewhere in the southwest where he might feel safer. Um, that could be an alternative. So it remains to be seen if uh, uh, the trial judge, my Lord, the Honorable Justice, Bintan Yako, will accede to their requests or demands to not just transfer him to, but rather to release Kano and ask him to go home and then pay him compensation because uh, they feel Abuja is not safe. I, I doubt that that will happen. Uh, you know, it's never happened in a court case. What you see is that they transfer cases you know, to other uh, locations. It's happened especially in uh, uh, political cases, election, uh, post-election uh, cases. You have the cases moved, maybe they say the, the judge feels unsafe or the state is not safe. Maybe that's the state election held in. They can move that, uh, that case to Abuja. So let's see what happens. Will Justice Bintan Yaku uh, see to the demands of IPOB and say, oh, uh, um, I've dismissed this case Kano, we don't feel safe in Abuja. You are free to go home. We will not just allow you to go home. We're going to pay you money because uh, a UN group says so. We don't know. We'll see how that, how that pans out. All right, let's move on to another one. This is quite interesting because um, uh, not too long ago, a new law was signed. All right, and a new agency was formed as far as um, the, the health insurance uh, programs in the country was concerned concerned and you know transiting from the old regime to a new regime we're told that the federal government has concluded plans to kickstart the implementation of a long-awaited compulsory health program all right this is a com compulsory health program in order to make quality health 
and affordable health care services accessible to 92 million vulnerable Nigerians. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, Boss Mustafa, uh, made this disclosure known uh, when a delegation from the World Health Organization uh, led its country representative, Dr. Walter Mulombo Kazadi, alongside the Executive Secretary um, of the organization, to uh, pay him a courtesy visit in his office. That's the Executive Secretary, rather, of the Nigerian Health Insurance Authority. This is a new organization, all right, that has taken over from the SWA regime of the Nigerian Health Insurance um, Scheme, the NHIS. And Nigerians are hoping that with this new one that President Buhari has signed into law, things will change. You know, uh, some have said, can anything good come out of Nazareth with this one? But let's see how it goes. The signs are there. The World Health Organization is very interested in seeing this work, and they've gone to, you know, have discussions with the federal government, uh, uh, particularly the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, um, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Now, the SGF said that the signing into law of the National Health Insurance Authority bill by President Buhari signaled a new lease of life to the health uh, sector, uh, which would uh, make universal health coverage accessible to all the nukes and crannies of the country. They want to take health care to every part of Nigeria. And uh, the, uh, the National Health Insurance Scheme didn't really... Uh, didn't really achieve what it was meant to achieve. So this is one that uh, uh, one is hoping uh, will do the magic. It's very important. You look at countries all over the world. In the U.S., they have what you call uh, Medicare. You know, in the U.K., they have what you call the NHS, uh, which we've seen prominently in the fight against uh, COVID-19. It's been everywhere. Even the footballers have also been, you know, putting the stamp of the NHS on their football uh, 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 jersey. So this is when we hope that, you know, Nigeria will have something that the world can also see is working for everyone. I mean, the cost of private health care is not really, really easy to afford for those who are um, in a vulnerable segment of society and government needs to do something to help them. All right, so we'll see how that pans out. Is it just about words uh, to the uh, World Health Organization or are they going to back their words with action and get affordable um, health care, much needed affordable health care to what they say are 92 million vulnerable Nigerians. Some people feel that the 92 million is just a, uh, an under assessment of the number of people in this country that need, critically need help in accessing affordable and quality health care. Let's move on. Uh, people are still talking about the, the plans or the the thoughts going on and the talks going on amongst uh, or in the corridors of power and the federal government of Nigeria to ban commercial motorcycles in the country, operations of commercial motorcycles in the country as a way of uh, nipping terrorism in the bud. You know, after a uh, previous uh, federal executive uh, council, national security council meeting, rather, uh, the attorney general of the federation, Minister of Justice, uh, you know, made a presentation to the press. He spoke to the press and said that these are some of the things they discussed at that National Security Council meeting. Number one, uh, banning the operation of uh, commercial motorcycles in Nigeria, a public called Okada. And number two, banning uh, mining activities for now, uh, because they say that the mining activities uh, increase terrorism because these guys are interested in getting the, the minerals. And also when they get the money from you know, trading in these minerals, they are able to use the, the funds to, uh, to, 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 uh, to fund their terrorist activities. Number two, you know, banning the commercial motorcycles, they feel that these motorcycles aid in the logistic uh, movement and operations of uh, these terrorists. And of course, you can see in previous reports, even in the attack on the Kujie prison, it was said that uh, 300 terrorists came there on motorcycles. I don't know how uh, they were able to count them, but I mean, I'm sure somebody just did a general... Uh, general assessment. So, um, a, a Nigerian Civil War veteran, he's also an elder statesman, Al Haji Ahmed Adoke, has joined, you know, the the debate. He has cautioned the federal government uh, over those plans to, you know, slam a ban on the use of commercial motorcycles as a means of transportation in the country. Um, Ahmed Adoke is also a human rights activist. Uh, yesterday in Abuja, he explained. Uh, that the reason that used by the federal government to justify 
the planned ban on commercial motorcyclists or motorcycle operations are across Nigeria. This is a nationwide ban. He says it's not only ridiculous, but he says it's an admission of failure that the government has no solution to the insecurity challenges uh, in the country. So he, he, he put out a statement. He issued it to journalists. And in that statement, he warned the federal government not to actualize the planned ban on Okada riders on the ground that uh, the multiple negative, what he calls the negative effects, would be too much for the nation uh, to bear. What are these negative effects, according to Ahmed Adoki? Now, he says that um, jobs will be affected. You know, uh, the cost of uh, transportation could also go up. He's talked about the teeming university graduates who have been forced to the labor market because of... Uh, uh, and there are no jobs there, so they have to, you know, some of them have to ride commercial motorcycles or maybe invest in that business uh, just to survive. He says this will impact negatively on them. You know, the teeming youth of Nigeria who have taken to Okada riding to keep body and soul together, this uh, ban will have a negative effect on them. Um, you know, he said that Okada is the most visible means of transportation, you know, for market men and women, uh, as well as civil servants to just help them keep up with the social or rather the economic realities in Nigeria today. He talked about economic hardships, you know. So he says using insurgency, using banditry and terrorism as grounds or reasons to impose a ban on the use of motorcycles as a means of transportation, he says that he claims that this uh, will not be acceptable uh, to Nigerians. This is what he says. Now, the last part of his statement reads, uh, uh, or his statement reads in part, uh, quote, last Friday, 22nd July, uh, Nigerian dailies and other media outfits, he says, were awash with the news that the federal government of Nigeria was considering the ban uh, or banning the use and distribution of motorcycles as well as mining activities in the country. He went on to say in that statement, quote, the news followed a press statement issued by the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. Um, well, let's, let's go to uh, the... Uh, important part of uh, his statement. Quote, he says, It is very clear that the use of the motorcycles by terrorists, bandits, or Boko Haram to the scene of operation falls into the semi-final stage of the operations. He says, meaning that they can be checked at the early stage before the execution if the intelligence unit of the nation's security outfit is effectively utilized. He says, quote, Several questions that linger in the minds of Nigerians are, will there be no other means of transportation available to the terrorist. Let's see if this Okada uh, man is carried out. He says, it is not possible that terrorists can even strike at their target without the use, or is it not possible that terrorists can even strike at their target without the use of any uh, modern means of transportation? He says, again, weighing the economic implications of the federal government's decision uh, on the ban of motorcycles, there is no denying the fact that across the nation today, the use of motorcycles for commercial purposes has become a major source of employment and livelihood for needy Nigerians. Uh, so he says government or its agents sometimes go into negotiation with the terrorists, meaning that the government cannot deny knowledge of where the terrorists are hiding, he says. He says, for instance, the terrorists behind the Kaduna train attack released some captives on two different occasions after the payment of heavy ransom, is it not cowardice that the Nigerian security apparatus could not locate where the rest of the captives are kept in the bush for their release? He's asking. He says, is it not in this country that terrorists or bandits are photographed with their captives, uh, release video threats to the helpless, and yet the federal government has failed to act to rescue her citizens? Um, these are very, very seriously begging questions being asked. Uh, by uh, Ahmed Adoke. Uh, he's saying uh, it is incomprehensible to listen to President Buhari uh, that he is eager to leave office, meaning that he is no longer keen uh, or has become helpless in the affairs of Nigerians. Adoke says, then let the President uh, Buhari resign and hand over to his vice. Undoubtedly, Nigerians are tired of the rampant cases of killings by terrorists, bandits, and Boko Haram. Uh, for mine, it's not, uh, you know, far from the sentiments and feelings of, uh, let me say, most of those who've analyzed this situation, who've commented on this uh, uh, idea the federal government has put out, that they're considering this ban. Um, listening to you know, most views that have, uh, you know, flowed after this announcement by the Attorney General, Minister of Justice, 
I think majority of those who have commented on this feel that the um, federal government is not getting it right uh, on this one. It remains to be seen if uh, the advice and the views of the likes of Adoke uh, will, will come, you know, will bring something to bear, will impress on the federal government and President Buhari himself to have a rethink and not consider that nationwide Okada ban. All right, let's uh, take a pause at this juncture. We have uh, an interesting analysis of the headlines in today's National Daily is up next when we return from this break. Please stay with us.